Hello Internet, and welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That, Thai Tuesday. Today we're talking about Thailand 4.0. That's right, in the past few years, Thailand has gone through more successful updates than my iPhone. Only difference, when Thailand did it, there was an actual positive effect. Okay, so maybe it changed Siri's voice, but call me when you figured out a way to increase my output by over 4% a year. So what is Thailand 4.0? Well, before we discuss that, let's get into a little history. You see, Thailand didn't just decide to start calling itself Thailand 4.0 because it sounded cool and implied progress. There has been a recent history of Thai improvement. So let's start with Thailand 1.0 that focused on agriculture. Deputy Agriculture and Cooperatives Minister Jintana Thayawanagan said that Thailand is driving its agricultural sector by improving Thai farmers' competency and developing them to become smart farmers and young smart farmers. Oh man, that looked like a crowd in the ninth hour of a presentation on calculus. That poor woman, she's here, looking like she's one syllable away from falling into a coma, and she's gone. Alright, so what is a young smart farmer? Well, according to International Lawyers Kingdom of Thailand, Thailand is trying to increase private industry investment in Thailand's agricultural exports. Now, saying you're allowing private investment is generally like saying, hey, we're going to sell this industry to America. But in this case, Thailand has specific investment rules that will keep the majority of funding domestic. First, foreigners are strictly prohibited from operating rice farming, plantations, crop growing, livestock farming, and forestry, and even timber processing from natural forests. Now that might sound like one of the quickest ways of having people lose interest in investing. Because Thailand's agricultural sector is based off of many small independent farms, I could see a company like Chiquita coming in and jobs in agriculture leaving Thailand faster than ex-prime minister Ying Luk. As of 2017, some newer laws were added to increase the quality of farming. Specifically, tax exemptions for farmers who modernize their equipment and produce food that is high enough quality to be exported. Which is great, although if you're someone who earns about 20,000 baht or $600 a month, Thailand 2.0, which is focusing on light industry. The goal here is to increase the number of factories in Thailand and expand employment amongst the unskilled. Basically, this step is Thailand leaning over and trying to copy China's answer. <sighs> yeah, okay, we'll do that. One of the main pushes in this industrial revolution light is the EEC, or Eastern Economic Corridor, as a new special economic zone. This is huge because until recently, Thailand's major exports were commodities rather than goods, which is not exactly what you look for in a developed economy. It's the difference between saying, honey, I got you some jewelry, and honey, I got you this chunk of gold and a few rocks. This new EEC plan is designed to increase trade amongst ASEAN, or Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Now, for those of you listening not from Asia, we need to put an emphasis on South, because this group doesn't include China, Korea, and Japan. Think more Vietnam, the Philippines, Laos, and Thailand. What the Thai government is doing is spending 1.5 trillion baht or 43 billion dollars to update their existing export infrastructure, as well as building new bullet trains and railroad networks to increase trade. This strategy makes sense and it already seems to be working with the Thailand Economic Monitor 2017 reporting. Merchandise exports grew 6.6% last quarter, and that's after maintaining a steady growth rate, something that will continue to rise because of these policies. Although, this leads us perfectly into Thailand 3.0 and 4.0, which try to solve the problem of, we have too many people working in basic factories, let's get them better jobs. Wow, Thailand, you've only had those jobs for a year, if that, and you're already not satisfied? Now I know what it's like to have Asian parents. Thailand 3.0 is all about moving those workers that are recreating basic merchandise into jobs producing higher tech products. For example, from Thailand's PR department, 10 target industries will receive a major boost. The five first S-curve industries include next generation automobiles, smart electronics, affluent medical and wellness tourism, 
agriculture and biotechnology, and food processing. I would tell you what the other five industries are, but that would be a major spoiler for Thailand 4.0. So what is Thailand doing to spur on their car and smartphone industries? Focusing on the automotive industry, which already makes up more than 12% of Thailand's GDP, which leads them to be called the Detroit of Asia, in the one time being compared to Detroit as a positive, Thailand recently revealed their policies for expanding an industrial 4.0 initiative. And oddly enough, they couldn't be more opposite from Thailand's agricultural policies if they were advocating going back to the feudal system. The basic policies are, allow foreign manufacturers to do what they want in Thailand with 100% foreign ownership, no local content requirements, no export requirements, and no restrictions on foreign currencies. Now that is an insanely aggressive strategy on its own, but then you start throwing in the prospect of land ownership, China won't let you do that and ridiculously good tax systems, and it's no surprise that they're attracting large companies to produce with them. According to statistics released by a technology college in Bangkok, Thailand should be fully automated in five years, which, considering those statistics were created in 2015, means that Thailand is already more than halfway there. Congratulations! Now that statistic, which was generated by a survey of 94 entrepreneurs, so take that with a few grains of salt, has been written without citation by pretty much every article I could find on this issue and seems to be the most definitive timetable. And it also seems to be somewhat accurate, with Thai factories rapidly increasing their purchasing of robotic equipment. Because, again, Thailand is offering massive tax breaks to corporations that automate. My gosh, Thailand, are you going to have anyone left to tax at the end of all this progress? Now this brings us to Thailand's ideal future, Thailand 4.0, in which Thailand imagines creativity and innovation. And as everyone knows, creativity is best when mandated by the government. The Thai government is putting 48% of their investment budget into research and development for The new S-curve also comprises five industries, robotics, aviation and logistics, biofuels and biochemicals, the digital industry and the medical hub. They are also trying hard to attract qualified people from overseas, which honestly can't be that hard to sell. Hey, do you want to get paid to live in Thailand? I'd be hailing a taxi to the airport before you could even say your next sentence. One interesting push is that Thailand seems to be attempting to not just focus their investments in developing the tech sector in Bangkok, but rather across the entire country, which is an interesting decision considering that they're investing 10 billion baht or 300 million dollars into this research fund. Which, while it is a lot of money, might not be enough money to put the majority of Thailand through thousands of years of European progress from the industrial revolution to the technological revolution in just a few years. But to see how Thailand 4.0 continues to develop, we'll be keeping an eye on it over here at That's All I Have to Say About That. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that last video. For more episodes of Thai Tuesday, click here. Please like and subscribe and if you're really a fan, you can join our Facebook group.